Well, let's see what happens here in Champs Like, because this is a crucial one to get correct here. CLG on the blue side for this final game. FlyQuest over on the red. Malzaha ban, Aurelian Soul ban. These are all the things we expect. The questions are, what are the adaptations moving into this first phase of bans? Because Rengar is just sticking out on the FlyQuest side of something CLG don't want to give away. And there's even a change here. Rumble ban second by CLG. Well, they do have side selection here, and that is the advantage. Oh. FlyQuest, knowing the importance of Rengar, which is 4-0 now in this series, uh, it's going to take get taken away. So that is a change in the pick bands. They're going to have to leave something else open. Perhaps Camille. Yeah, definitely a lot of top lane options still left on the table. Oh, there goes one of them. Shen off the table. Would, would CLG even be willing to first pick a Nautilus if it was left up, though? I'd... I think they take Camille. Uh, but we'll see. Like, I mean, Nautilus is open. Uh, the Lulu would have been an easy first pick for CLG, but that's gone. So, you know, now they're kind of forcing them into that into that choice. Balls also has not had a lot of success on Camille, so you could leave it open saying, hey, you can't really play it. Yeah. First pick okay. Graves is apparently the answer for CLG. So we'll see what FlyQuest want to do here for their uh, first two picks of this final game. I mean, the Nautilus is up, uh, and I think that Balls on Tanks has been really good for them. Um, all, that being said, you know, they, they showed success with both the uh, Renekton as well as the Rumble already. And you've essentially already given over the better jungler to CLG. Are you willing to also give away uh, this top laner that has been banned out time and time again? Because if you did not pick it here, you know, it's not guaranteed that Darshan will, but certainly has the ability to and has had some good carry performances. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, maybe FlyQuest want Darshan on a slower moving champion, so it takes yep. them longer to join up with the rest of the team. Uh, tank isn't very effective if he's not there at the beginning of the fights. And if if you do lock in that Camille, Poppy is available. We have seen FlyQuest run that matchup before as well. Uh, so that is something that they could look at. Well, I like this from FlyQuest actually, just straight picking the duel lane that performed so well in the final game and continuing to take Ash away from Stixay. So Calm Ash there, their first two picks. CLG, if they want Camille, probably have to pick it now. I do expect us to see a Poppy come out if this is the option. A Nautilus would be strong here too, but I do think that FlyQuest has shown the propensity to, to pick that matchup, even when Camille was super uh, overpowered. Yeah, especially after the nerfs to Camille coming in, I definitely think that is a matchup they're willing to take. Um, CLG though, if they do lock it in, and they do, uh, looking to commit to that split push style. I mean, Camille does still take a little bit of help to get through the early game. It's just, you know, once you get those items coming through, well, it really takes off. Yeah, I'm going to be really interested to see FlyQuest phase two bans as well after the next pick here, because although 6A lost, he did more than, I think, triple the damage of the Ash last game. He was very close to actually taking over uh, that game on Ezreal. He was very, very strong. And, you know, do you target things like the Caitlyn, like the Ezreal, trying to take 6A off one of those threats? Because if that was a closer game as far as gold, I think he does. I think over. so as well. But there's an army for CLG to go with the Camille. And Renekton is actually the pick that Balls wants, not the tankier pick like the okay. Poppy. They continue to ban Vlad away as well. So 6A will have an AD carry option open in either Ezreal or Caitlyn. And they horrendously misclick on the, on, in their phase two bands. And, and I do think that Renekton can match up well with Camille, especially if, if you, as long as you're not behind by Trinity Force time, I think you do very well in the early game. You can be quite strong. You still have extremely powerful gank assist and can set that up. And then a couple more jungle bands coming in against Moon, but Moon is the guy who has the pocket Evelyn. Uh, it does, definitely has the Graga still, has been one of my favorites actually of, of his champions uh, that he can definitely delve into so I don't I don't think these bands are gonna you know hurt him that much no but it, it would be very exciting to see something like that Evelyn come out in a game five if he has <laughs> yeah. confidence on it or to see or if he goes Shanko. to Shanko. Yeah. <laughs> I was going there next to see I if mean... Kobe gets something <laughs> well there's Ariana actually banned for CLG Ooh. so I really like that little ban here I okay. think they're going to counter pick for high but it kind of depends on what they're thinking of playing if they're also trying to hide a jungle pick, they'll probably want to counter pick it as well. So this is, should tell us a lot about what FlyQuest want to do here. And they've taken away one of the safer blind pick mid laners. So if you wanted to leave your jungle for last, that is now made more difficult. He's there doing it, it is. Hey. To I mean, oh, it makes man. sense. Moon has performed so many times on this champion. If you're in this sort of situation, you know that the whole, your whole team, but especially your leader high is just saying, dude, 
You're great at Evelyn, just pick it. We're gonna win this game. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what build he goes with too, because Evelyn has a lot of options. It's very easy to be flexible in it. Um, Gunblade. Could, yeah, I was gonna say, I wanna see a Gunblade! <laughs> That's where I was leaning towards. Um, he could though. go super Ooh. offensive with it. Uh, Stixa, one of the old specials here for him. Definitely re regaining a bunch of ground after the buffs to uh, play the Ruin King and everything. Loves to build that first. Uh, and you can play some pretty unique builds as far as the lifesteal tank type uh, setups on that Glista. Game five, forcing out some more. Oh, Echo over here, baby. Oh, and who he's Echo. Uh, the champion they pulled off their double TP play with, and one of the assassins that he has been very good at taking over team fights with as and well. CLG has made a clear statement with this draft. This is a 1 3 1 setup. Yeah. You have your Callista to keep your Nami safe, your Nami to disengage for your other. All right, here we and go. You have the 1 3 1, two assassins in the mid lane. We finally get High to have his assassin matchup and who he's the one <laughs> to take the challenge. Well, Talon for High is going to be the final pick for FlyQuest. And this drop couldn't signify the styles of these I'm teams so anymore. Game five, baby. It really brings out what people feel comfortable on. What are you going to go to in crunch time? It's, it's a beautiful thing, seeing all these players bring out <laughs> these picks in the most important game of the season for them. And that will test the macro play of CLG, the cool under pressure, the elegant play they've shown for so long, versus the raw aggression of FlyQuest. They've won the last two games going full steam ahead. I don't know what speed is above that for this team, but <laughs> they will show us here in this game. One thing I do want to say is the importance of Evelyn's start is made even more important by the fact that the rest of his team is all AD. He needs to be a solid AP threat so his team cannot itemize very easily towards mass ninja tobbies and things like that. Plus, you know, High is all in with this mid lane assassin style. He's taking Ignite, whereas Echo almost always will take that teleport uh, and have more options later into the game. You know, parkour is great for getting across the map fast, but teleport's better. Yeah. And, and that's, once again, towards the split push, right? They want the 1-3-1 one, one game. CLG does not need to really make something happen in the early game, I feel like. There's much more pressure on FlyQuest. CLG should look to play safe, farm it out, set up their 1-3-1. One, one. FlyQuest needs the aggression, and they need it early. And these teams would not have it any other way in a final game, but only one of them can win. So oh, we'll, really? So we'll see whose style is going to look a lot better here. Seven. Let's keep going. <laughs> Don't do that to Lemon Nation. <laughs> He's got the three things so down pat. <laughs> three games, three matches, one last game here. CLG FlyQuest all the way to game number five. So interesting, too, when you have series pushed to game five like this uh, in the possible setups for the reverse sweep, you know, is FlyQuest really able to keep it going? They, they have People talk about momentum all the time, uh, and they're definitely feeling more confident with recent wins. Uh, but CLG, no, this is the last stand and their last chance at getting further in the playoffs. And also uh, repeating their MSI success from last year. That was, you know, the, the peak of CLG success was MSI last year. They need to win here to keep going, to fight for that dream. Well, it looks like their future opponents are already weighing in on the results of this potential game, both Bjergsen and Hornso, who these teams will play. Well, CLG is if actually they coming down to collapse here. Really nice here. Who are we going to start it off? Elimination. Uh -oh. oh, triple flash force already for FlyQuest. CLG trying to get the damage done early. Smithy not quite They're enough force left. Ebon Flow is there, but the Ray going to force them back. CLG looking to get some uh, early kills for themselves there, but everybody does get out alive. Flashes in mid lane. Don't say too soon. Yeah. Elimination going to get the Q down. They're going to get flanked, though. This is super dangerous from CLG. And it's 130 now. Minions are already coming down. Moon is in. The damage is good. Afro's going to be forced to flash away. Moon doesn't follow Flash. So aggressive from everyone here at level one. Okay, so both supports, no Flash. The Talon, though, critically as well. No Flash in the mid lane. Uh, could definitely uh, take away a lot of the pressure that he likes to play with. The other thing is that Evelyn does get, you know, fairly damaged clearing the jungle and got harassed pretty early on, you know, going for the wraparound gank there to get that flash off the bottom lane. Uh, see if Moon goes for this. One thing you can do to get a lot of life back, starting that talisman, you just press the Q as you walk by the raptors. There are so many of them. It tags the health steal on every single one. You don't kill them. You just walk away and let the health come in. Yeah, Moon actually cleared the wolves already and still has smite, so should safely take these raptors. All might even go to red. Great ward from CLG has spotted Moon out, though. That's really important information against an Evelyn, who he just harassing down onto high, but that time wonder doesn't quite connect. And look for Huhi 
to really play the early stages aggressively, try to push with his Q, and then try to get a decent amount of gold and base. But it's an all-in in the bot lane. Lemonation with no flash. Knocked down first, but sticks that is CLG on the board, but there's a trade <laughs> kill. Alta gets one back, and he's got a flash. He might go after Afro here. Whoa. Sticks had his flash. He could have backed off yeah, and still going I, forward. I'm just trying to think what, what he was thinking was going to happen right there with the, the auto attack trading. But in the end, one for one trade. Oh, it's the bubble from Afro. He's been so on point with those this series. Just triggers the all in. And Sticks I, I think he's just accepting his death there. Just... Yeah. You're like, hmm, maybe he could go for like the flashback, auto onto that minion and try to hop backwards. But yeah, maybe I just accepted it. And I do think if, if you think there's no way to get out there, it's actually better to not trade flashes and, and just give up your death, keep your flash alive against someone like the Evelyn and the Talon. Oh, hi, just gonna clean these minions out of the way. A lot of mana being expended by both of these assassins. Level four there for both of them as well. So things looking even there. Yeah, and, and that does go in Hui's favor. If, if you can actually just make it a wave clear game, just push it back and forth, because you will be the one to push out the final wave, teleport back and try to come back here with an item advantage. But Smithy's coming down. This is so much aggression. Sticks is only level two, and now Artek's being caught. Good flash, gonna get him out to safety, but he will not be so lucky next time. Yeah, Sticks did a good job chasing him up into the river there, uh, right into Smithy's waiting arms and getting a free summoner for himself, plus denying a bunch of minions. This is in a very good spot for uh, their duo lane on the bottom side, and it makes it fairly risky for Alltech. And Moo moving around here, getting some vision down. Uh, he does have the early Hunter's Talisman. He's going to come back and try to capitalize on this TP. Wait. Who he moving up could be in some trouble. Very successful. Otherwise, Flyquest just forced to play back now. And you have to be so careful against the Kalista because she can chase you down with that all in, especially because of the speed ups and the slowdowns that Nami offers for the Kalista. And now we get into kind of a difficult situation for the Evelyn because. Graves is going to power farm better than an Evelyn can ever. Um, but there's, this, there's so much pressure for him to create something, uh, a laning advantage because of that fact. And right now, he's waiting around bottom. We kind of talked about how he didn't want to wait around forever. He'll fall beh behind in farm. And that is kind of happening. He was shadowing down bottom here for the last like 20 seconds. Um, even though his Krugs are up, and Smithy is just base, back out to farming, base, back out to farming. And, and look at the sense that CLG has that he is around here. They know they pushed it in, so they do not need to move up to force the, the minion wave. That CS will come to them. So they back off, they play it very safe, because they know that Moon must make something happen. Do not give him an easy gank. Make him force it and put him in a bad spot. Yep, so much of the last two games for FlyQuest have been about Moon's early success, so... Keeping the Evelyn down in the early game when she's strongest is absolutely vital. Hui diving him back onto high as well, but high back in there with a bit of a bleed. bleed. Yeah, pretty critical there to get back uh, the end of that trade. Level six now for high. And it is a very interesting matchup because both of these champions rely on that third hit. That was a great shot. Smithy's around here. For it. Smithy going in, but high actually going to get aggressed on there by Smithy. Park close over the wall, but there's the W going to follow him high back over the next wall. I don't really know where he can go, but he's going to try and get himself out. He can try try and time it out to go for an execute as well if he fakes them out here. He's or out. just go for the escape. Lemon Nation here to save him. CLG over. Oh, he got the slow. But he's got enough walls to get out. Honey Fruit pops and High <laughs> gets out. They do get the flash, though, and who he will be able to have the push here. Uh, so that is still something gained uh, for CLG. Look, Smithy might even be waiting. Doesn't see the next leap. Has level six, but blue buff is up here for high. He's probably going to lose it with CLG starting it up. They do have to be a little bit careful. One of the tendencies Smithy has had is he has a tremendous amount of alone deaths. He is supported by the team here now, though. Uh, so we'll be able to take away that blue buff. Going to smite it away. Likely donate the next one over to who he is. Moon is looking with level six. High going to try and make something happen. They know he's embraced down. Who are we going to dive back in onto Moon? TP committed for CLG. He's going to cancel it. Moon just burns the ulti and walks away. It was matched critically, so neither team comes out with that TP advantage. Balls has almost always matched. As soon as anyone sees a TP, I feel like they're making the call, and he instantly matches, because that's so many times this series. Uh, whenever Darshan starts it out, Balls is right there to answer, and then we'll just cancel it right after. And I think especially between these two teams, uh, they have such a, a willingness to commit to these crazy all-in team fights. If that's about to break out, you cannot afford to be late at all. So he's willing to not make the greedy play and always match. Nice stuff there. Again, Balls just has so much experience playing with his two teammates, High and Lemon, and now a season with all of FlyQuest. And against this, this very guy, I mean, Darshan, and Balls have been playing against each other in the top lane in North America for years. Blue buff over the Tuhi, so 
The early smite from Smithy not going to cost him anything. Time Winder going to snag it. And now going to walk back to mid lane. Serrated so Dirk Dunbar, he's booking it back down. But Hui in a really good spot here in that mid lane. Again, just shoving it up. He's going to have the teleport back up in 45 seconds and can look to make some sort of side lane play high. He wants to leave this lane where possible, but without the early start from especially his jungler, there's just not as many options for FlyQuest to be as aggressive. And it's just the fact that Echo is always going to be pushing you in. He's a very safe champion. He can match the roams as well with the TP, uh, as he can also use the ultimate to get back to lane. So he has a lot of options uh, to play around, although it would be risky against an assassin to use that ult to get back to lane. Actually, pings here around the dragon area for FlyQuest even. They stop off on a couple of the wards, though, uh, doing some vision man. work. I'll take with level six, so good ultimate to add to the mix. Six ain't not quite there yet. You can see that push into the bottom lane really helping. FlyQuest, just really good positioning, are going to take this. And Infernal Drake in this game with damage-oriented junglers, damage-oriented top laners, assassins in the mid lane is very big. Done there for balls on Tadashan. Zips out of the way from under that second queue, I believe. And it looks like our next Drake is in line with the tension of the series because Infernal number two <laughs> will be on the way shortly. Yeah, puts even more pressure on it. I will say that the early game has gone the way that CLG would like it to. They're the ones who want to set up a split push. They're the ones, I think, that have uh, the better setup for the late game with Camille starting to outscale that Rengar in the 1v1. You know, Huhi with a teleport to split push. So things are looking nice for them in that regard, but FlyQuest obviously right in there. Good. Big amount of damage from Darshan actually. Balls trading nicely, but looks like his jungler is not behind him. That's have Camille speedy. ult. Balls does have his splash, but he's got to use it carefully. Now Camille ult is going to lock him down. He pops his ultimate, but he's got no help here. Darshan maybe going to get low here. Balls going to try and fight it out, but he doesn't have it. It's Smithy snags the kill. Looked like he accepted his death there as well. Didn't want to burn the flash uh, in attempted escape because the flashes from CLG could come through after that as well. And, and Moon will at least be able to soak up that farm. Uh, actually, Boss has his teleport, so that would create a desync if he decides to use it. They could just make the call, hey, Moon, soak this wave, and I'll walk my way over there if they really feel like having that teleport will be important for the bottom lane, which is crucial. Yeah, it definitely could be. Especially, you know, you, when you only have one teleport against double TP, it feels really bad if you don't have either available because you can very easily send your jungler bot, double TP on a wave, and, and look for that five-man dive. Well, it looks like Bolt is going to let Moon have a bit of that XP and move his way back, holding that teleport. Moon with the Rune and is now finished, goes back with the control. But again, he's just been farming, which is fine, and he's got a good amount of CS, but... Still not affecting the lane just yet. One cool little thing to note in this bot lane is the positioning of Aphromoo. He is standing intentionally ahead of 6A uh, for that incoming Ash Arrow any time that they could be at risk for having that come in. Uh, that's because you can use the face call from Calista to pull out your support and save him. So although he doesn't have a cleanse or something, look at how he's standing. He's always there uh, to soak up that incoming arrow. Soaks up Poke as well as you can see. His moon actually did sneak down here. Smithy though, also in the area, Hawkshot gonna seek it. Try and get some information. Does spot X Smithy, but Moon is just creeping forward on the Evelyn. If, if they go for this, they have to kill someone very fast because Smithy is near and there's two TPs available, but Moon is behind them. This looks like a great setup. Arrow in on this after but now they're gonna go off to Stick Stay. Marco comes in, but it's not quite enough. It's like flashes Here's forward. The TP. Isn't quite gonna go, but Stick Stay almost goes down. CLG looking to close it down. A Stick Stay gets assassinated by Lemon High, makes his way down, but the Echo's already killed the AD carry. Hi gets stunned in the parallel convergence. Balls actually went for the teleport interruption rather than the teleport answer this time around, which is a very intelligent move because now they do have that extra cooldown. And in the end, both AD carries being traded. Hi was able to make his way down there eventually with his parkour. But actually, I do think that was favorable for FlyQuest considering both teleports for CLG now on cooldown. And more bot lane summoners were expended. You know, CLG with a quick disengage, but Moon honestly set this up so well, getting fully behind the oh, CLG bot there. lane. And, ooh, he walks, walks back in after he had escaped, and Lemon Nation nails him with the empowered Q right there. And you just feel the pressure that sticks at his end. I mean, he is one of the stars, if not the star of CLG. He's such a good carry player. But he got first blood, but it was a trade kill. He's the first one to go down in that fight, and he knows he's kind of getting picked on, like, the pressure is on this guy's shoulders, and he's performed before, but it's tough looking. Definitely still have to, you know, 
give the respect to the support players as well, even though it's just a Karma over there. Just the Karma able to thread the needle and, and make sure it's a 1-1. One -one. Those, those Mantra Soul players are, are very, very powerful. It's interesting to look over at Boogie and how defensively he is itemizing. He's picking up, you know, the the Ninja Tabbies, the Seekers, and going the most defensive part of the Proto Belt with that Kindle Gem. So he's going to be very hard for High to take out. He just wants to slow down the game, slow down the progression, and get into the side lanes. And he still had enough damage to clean up the kill on the bottom side. So it didn't cost him not building the extra damage so far. I uh, guess the Bleed Smithy here in the mid lane, though. Shadow Assault out. It's just going to get him to safety, but. Good bit of pressure. Again, X Smithy really been in the right places for a lot of these lane trades. And look at this. They are attacking balls once again. He has a ward this time around, though, so, so he can see them come for this collapse. I don't know about this uh, pressure on turrets. They could actually bring a red buff Graves to destroy it pretty quickly. And one of the nice things about a play like this is Hui does not fully commit. They back him off, and now they have zoned balls off the XP. But High's going bot side, yeah. trying to make a counterplay. True 2 FlyQuest style, they're going to go for a play on the opposite side of the map. Actually, Ball snuck in there, too, to defend. He's going to find him on the Croc Dragon, he's going to down on the Sticks. They move, flashes forward, he needs the kill. First on Nogga's going to happen, but after oh! he gets that, High takes out Sticks, they Afro falls as well. High collects the double kill on Balls. Is he going to barely get away from this game? Oh! He goes in, the tower damage not enough. X Smithy gets the trade kill. Moon played that so well, he actually flashed over the Nami wave, avoiding that stun, allowing them to clean up the double kill. And Altex shoots. Shooting that angle down out to the outside almost misses, but it ends up clipping Afro, Afromu as well. And they're able to pick up the kills and uh, turret on the opposite side. What a trade. It is the first turret, but that said, CLG may clean up two turrets here. So fighting back, they should come out away with a gold lead. But still a trade though, because Infernal's up oh, in safe. five. High able to save that turret, but Fly are likely going to get the next dragon. In fact, Elimination going to force a flash onto Hui. Now stayed up. High seems to get in there, but the ulti's down. That's going to seal his death. I think Shadow Assault's in. Elimination gets another kill. Elimination is on a rampage here. Ganks mid lane gets the flash, the ult, and the kill onto Hui. Wow, they get Infernal Drake number two. This game is out of control. Yeah, Hui just got his hand caught in the cookie jar. He wanted to finish off that last bit of health on the turret. Not only does he just not do that, but he He's not there to fight for the Infernal. The double scaling advantage will be so big. And here's this play again on bot side. CLG a little bit unlucky to get caught here. And watch the flash from Moon over the tidal wave. Does not get stunned. So well done. Uh, the Evelyn invisibility really the key here. Because uh, they saw High coming. And he throws the bubble. He's able to lock up High. But didn't account for the Evelyn. They sweep around the outside. And they're able to pick them both up due to that arrow hitting as well. The fact that High grabbed both the kills here too is, is pretty much exactly where you'd want to go. You know, get it snowballing on that carry. Yeah, uh, from CLG's perspective, if they are to uh, snowball right back into this one because the uh, gold lead is very close, the, the big difference are those Infernal Drakes. If they are able to get back in this one, uh, it's going to need to be off of, you know, this Camille scaling, right? Her Trinity Force is getting pretty close. Has to see a mat. They focused that on that side, and they're still focusing on that side. Ultimatum still there. Balls just can't get out in time. He tries to dash away, but Darshan is going to chase it down. Good bit of healing, but Darshan still gets the kill again. It is becoming a bit problematic that they're not actually defending balls on the top side. They are trying to roam up and make a counter play. We'll see if they can catch them. This game is just full of pain trains now. Everybody goes up <laughs> to the top side after he dies. Now they're going right back mid as uh, they are alerted to the roam. It's never a fair fight, Kobe. <laughs> Well, Smithy has done a great job helping pressure these lanes. You can see 2-0-2 involved in almost every kill for this early part of the game for CLG, but FlyQuest, still a team that will play in your face for as long as possible. High, skulking down towards that bottom side, looking for a target. Moon doing the same. This is the tag team that's going to carry FlyQuest through this mid-game. Yeah, definitely true. And it just reiterate Azale's point earlier about the armor stacking as a possibility. Uh, it is crucial that... You know, Moon does get some of the gold here to be that AP threat. Already you can see four Ninja Tabbies are purchased here on CLG's side. They did not hesitate. No, not at all. And, and Darshan, while he is going to build aggressive first, likely seem to try for us and then probably get something like a Titanic, you can build tanky after that. And you can uh, stand up very well to the rest of these members. Moon hoping someone else walks past, but I'll take this going to pressure this turret. Hurricane not quite there yet. In fact, both AD carries should be starting their builds in a very similar fashion. Blade of the Ruin King's done. Ruin's on the way next. There's a proto belt now done for Huhi. 
Although we're still looking again for Dutch on Trinity, Force Flight cleaving on for Balls, and the BF Sword again for High, so looking for a lot of that early damage. If FlyQuest can find the right targets, High especially will just destroy them. And and the one-on-one -on -one between Huhi and High is going to be so critical. If someone can get this big edge in that, that unlocks the split push completely for them. Interesting uh, allocation here as FlyQuest opt to rotate two up to the top side. Uh, to try and get some pressure onto Darshan, but their middle turret is so low, I don't know if High alone could hold that. That's like one auto attack from six and maybe two. He scares them off though as the Rome comes back down from the top squad. Yeah, both sides kind of bail out of the play as Darshan is able to clear it out. Then High, you know, with the rest of the members missing, can threaten that engage too. So both teams playing with a lot of respect for the other team. This is game five. There's so much additional pressure on the line. You know, one poor decision can cost you the game, and oftentimes that can make players play at a more measured pace. Yep. Love game five full of all DPS champions. <laughs> <laughs> True. It looks like High goes back down towards the bottom lane to match who he. This is kind of the framework CLG want for that 1-3-1, so this should get better as the game goes longer. High, though, right now, looks to have some sort of 1v1 advantage, but he can't see for the rest of CLG are. Definitely can. And another thing I'd like to track is, will Aphromu go for a, an earlier Mikhail's this game? He never picked one up last game. We don't have QSS. The Ash Arrows were insane from Alltech last game, and I do think that Mikhail's can be quite powerful to help with that. Buy Mikhail's, save a life. Uh, Altec has been very accurate with those arrows from a, an abnormally long range as well. We'll see if he does get uh, more of those shots. I mean, he's got a lot of fog of war to fire them from. One thing about the ward coverage of FlyQuest, they've protected their territory very well. And if you shoot the arrow from your fog of war, it really does increase your chances a lot uh, with being able to land those. So much d more difficult for the CLG members to dodge. High's actually going to move towards the top side of the map, maybe due to the fact that Darshan looking strong with that Trinity Force now finished for Camille. Black Cleaver also now just picked up for Xmithy. There's a Drake up in a minute five, so FlyQuest See if they can continue their run on that objective or if CLG and that three lane pressure is going to start to really cause problems now that we're 20 minutes into the game. Definitely true. Both teleports are ready for CLG. Uh, even though the two Infernals are there for FlyQuest, the gold is fairly even. And it does real. Oh, okay, that one not going to find a spark. Good attempt though. And the arrow was the margins keeping 6A alive there. He was gone if that hits. Yeah, Moon was there as well for follow-up. He's been really good about sitting in the correct part of the lane and kind of doing what he needs to do. And actually, the Triforce now being done on Darshan means Ball's time in this one-on-one -on -one is kind of over. It becomes very difficult to match up with that power spike and the additional true damage coming out with that Triforce proc is so big. Exactly, that's why we can kind of see him hugging the turret instead. Oh, but oh, in. Straight in onto it, but Stixte pops the blade high, actually gets bubbled up. He's coming in. Darshan gonna make it first over the looks of things. They are gonna both complete this. Who he, excuse me? Darshan already here, and now Ball's, that's gonna run away. Parallel Convergence, gonna set it up, but there's Ball diving straight back in on Hui. Oh. He's gonna look to go down, but he also keeps himself safe high. Tries to get onto Stixte, but it's not quite enough as he flashes back forward. Stixte, so low, bubble, hits on the high. Altec in the front Darshan line, the Stixte back. takes down high. Darshan, he's gonna die to the oh. volley. Tags him through the Raptors. Another one an for one trade. Fight. This is a sick game. What a team by holy moly. All the flashes being blown there. They're Except still sticking around. Oh my goodness, the 1-1 one, one trade turns go down. Gonna get aggressive, FlyQuest, Altec oh. caught by a bubble. Moon gonna run a screen to try and cover for his AD carry. This should mean the end of the siege, but we'll see. FlyQuest playing crazy. That's what I like to see. Everybody taking lots of damage. Flashes in and out there. Just barely trading the kills. Yeah. Almost every flash explained from FlyQuest there. Going in, going out. Such a close fight. Altec, hold oh, up! No, Moose not quite far enough forward. And now Stixte, he looked to take him down. Arrow! Does land and takes a couple of targets off, but from the Darshan. second TP. Darshan makes it down. That's gonna be great. He, I mean, they stay for the Drake, and that's what cost FlyQuest that kill. Aphromu on the Nami has landed uh, so many Aqua Prisons, and this one, the conference to go for that flash onto Altec, earns them an objective. All right, we all need to calm down a little bit, I guess. <laughs> that's what this is telling us. Everyone relax. The Aqua Prison is actually deceptively hard to hit, too. Like, it's super hard to hit. Yeah. If you have played Nami one time, you're like, how, <laughs> how does anyone land any of these? Yeah. Without without slows on someone uh, before them, it's definitely difficult. Good flash there from Aphromu. Gets all tech. Whew. And you know, it, it's kind of nice to have a spot to just let some of the tension slide away, at least briefly. 
We'll get news on what exactly is happening, but we do have a pause here. And I mean, it's kind of funny that this is the only time in the series so far we've had a pause, but I think it's fitting given the situation. And I think the thing I really love about best of five is, is it tests all your skills. And we're expecting shot calling to be a big thing in the series. We test mechanics, we test macro. What's your drafting like? How good are you at adapting? But Team fighting. More than anything else, best of fives test your heart. And these two teams have so much experience that, I mean, we're going to see really what these teams are made of. I mean, you know, saying it tests your heart sounds kind of funny, That's but it's Captain very, Planet stuff. It's, it's very <laughs> true because it, it's one of those things where team morale, right? That is so massive in a best of five. If you allow your team to feel defeated, it's so easy uh, to have a, a landslide defeat and you need to stay motivated. You need to keep up the confidence in your practice. That's why we've emphasized so many times the importance of how many veterans are on both of these squads. Still G, you know, one of the squads that's been together the longest, uh, high balls and lemonation uh, as a trio, uh, have played almost their whole careers together and uh, definitely showing up pretty big in this best of five. They certainly are, and they just have so much experience to lean on from being in tough situations time and time again. They were able to pull it back. You know, they know that they can do it, uh, and they have the faith in their team to be able to, to execute on these plays and to, to play, you know, risky comps, comps with high barriers of execution. Eve Talon in game five. We're well, back at it. Let's look at this crazy fight again. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look. All right, so that was one Aqua Prison onto high to delay this for the teleports. Now, they... Balls didn't want to cancel this because then his team would be left with odd numbers, but completing it does open him up to uh, a decent amount of harassment. Then they almost stun lock Kuki there. Everybody gets out of his ultimate uh, when he goes back in. Yeah, and high even flat W flashing in for more damage does get picked off, and it ends up being a trade. It's such a close fight. And what killed high? Another Aqua Prison from yeah. Afro Moo. <laughs> and then the initial play does continue. They're trying to force down it. It ended up being all tech that was caught off that, which resulted in CLG going towards the Dragon where we are now. Uh, at this pause, game of five here, 22 minutes in. Uh, it's really tight. And I think it is important to highlight, Afro's play has been exceptional on the Nami all series long. And Hai, you know, kind of doing what he needs to do. He's certainly looking a lot more comfortable now that his team's picked up some momentum. I know we called it the shot caller stream when we were looking at the old stream <laughs> for the first two games, but like, that kind of undersells other qualities that these players have. Like, leadership is very important in moments like this. And that's the other thing that the captains of your team bring. It's, you know, being a cheerleader and boosting that morale. And once again, Hai and Afro will be tested at every single level. I really do like that distinction because th these guys are two of the best in-game leaders um, and out-of-game leaders that we have ever had in the North American LCS. Just a quick update as well. Uh, Altec had a problem with his screen, so that's what we're kind of investigating into. Apparently, a froze. Uh, very difficult to play when that happens. It happens to me a lot, but it's usually gray, so I don't really know <laughs> about that bug. Seems... Seems a little weird. Yeah, I got that bug too sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> the classic. Me, never. I've never actually... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're Never made about. a mistake. Never died, don't know what it's like to lose. That's Kobe. All right, so, uh, I mean, back to the state of the game, I, I do still think, despite the Infernal Dragons, if you choose, you know, one team to kind of take their spot, I, I do think CLG is still in a better position, uh, taking the compositions and their kind of goals in this game into consideration, you know, setting themselves up well for the 1-3-1. One, one. You know, they have a good amount of gold on both of their split pushers, and I think it's going to be more on FlyQuest still to execute on plays. And even though, you know, we keep talking about, oh, there's so much damage in these games and all the, these guys are running these DBS champions, um, you know, small amounts of armor are going to go a long way for the CLG squad. And you talk about the team comps, um, that might end up being a factor for them. Uh, that being said, it's not like there's a tremendous uh, uh, amount of diversification uh, across the other side, so... Uh, Elimination as well got a lot of kills on the Karma so far, so he's going to add some magic damage. And I mean, both both sides really uh, are going to be packing those small amounts of armor and resistances. Yeah, the armor is going to be very helpful. One thing where I do think it can make quite a difference is for guys like Altec. If who he can land a late game combo on you, and you don't have something like a Ma, like a Mercurial, like some of that magic resist, you can go down so fast. Like once uh, Echo is at like Lich Bane type status. It's ridiculous how much damage you can do. When there's so many assassins and so many mobile champions in the game, it becomes very difficult to play one of those AD carries that doesn't have their own dash, that is one of those low mobility carries. One of the things I also love about the combo that they have here is you use the Camille ult, it sets up very easily uh, for the Echo stun. You know, you're trapped in there, you cannot escape that follow-up, and, and that makes it even harder 
uh, for a dashless AD carry. It's right inside. It's just like playing blocks when you're five years old. <laughs> with the circle inside of the hexagon, Certainly right? Certainly tough to get time. <laughs> Looks like we are a couple of minutes, so not too far away from resuming the game. Looks like things are going well, fixing Altex issue, whatever he was having there. I think we've talked a lot about kind of the compositions and the scaling. I'm kind of curious, like, what does a winning team fight look like for, say, FlyQuest? Because it seems difficult to break up the one through one and that's going to be the challenge moving into the late game. It's catching someone with an ash arrow, it's getting flanks, it's full commitment to a fight while the split pushers are not there, or it's a collapse on the split pusher and taking them out. You need to be extremely decisive. On top of that, one of the best qualities uh, that Moon has displayed in the LCS this season especially is his flanking abilities. And I think that really does come from, you know, being born as this Evelyn main player that has played like thousands of games of Evelyn in solo queue as his main champion. Forget all that stuff, let's go back into the game. All right, let's go. Drake over to CLG. They'll get their first of this game. It is an ocean high, trying to defend the push that's coming down the mid lane, but deflects that one pretty effortlessly. Darshan, they're gonna get a turret, and things starting to open up for CLG. A gold lead now forming of almost 2,000. And Darshan also is going towards Ravenous Hydra, not Titanic. That is more of a 1v1 build rather than the team fight burst. You sustain up, you can outlast and out-trade this Renekton. Definitely true if you're not worried about getting that 100 to zeroed, which I don't Brave think man. he is. I mean, there's a talent with a dust blade that's just finished, so we'll see just how brave Darshan can afford to be. But FlyQuest right now just kind of defending CLG siege attempts here. So Scuttlecrab on the left side is going to go down over to them. FlyQuest without a Drake to play towards, probably moving their power towards this left side as well. High, I think it wants to be in a side lane, just kind of continue to farm and maybe catch somebody out. But again, CO2 will have the advantage in the side lanes due to those two TPs, although, which they do have right now. Yeah, here's some of that flanking we are talking about from Moon. Trying, sure trying to get in there from the side, but nobody's sticking out here for CLG. They know uh, that everyone has to be careful for the initiation. Altec looking for the arrow. Ooh, he actually going in. That might be a little too far. Gonna jump in on him and do some damage. He snared down and vulnerable with the Zonyas. Gonna have to burn the ulti quickly. No, goes down to Moon. A lot of it too far right there for who he goes right in on them. And, uh, you know, Altec holds on to the arrow because he knows that's a commitment. And if anyone else from CLG steps up, they'll get nailed. He actually had so much time to alt back out of that. Like, that is an unacceptable death. I mean, he dove into that. You see there's four people there. You press R, you're back out. They still get in for that one auto onto the turret, um, which is kind of curious. Uh, Altec does have arrow. I mean, I know they sent high up to the top side to farm the minions, but... Uh, they just let that one go down afterwards, and CLG still get money out of it. We're both getting stolen as well. Darshan has really just taken over this right-hand side of the map. Going to even get the Grump as he kind of waits for the wave to move back towards him. Balls is playing so far back towards that turret. Yeah, and he has to. He's going to have to for the rest of the game unless he has that support, uh, which can make it very difficult. And Huhi going down does allow High to have time up here on this top side, but CLG is moving up. I actually just gonna dodge out of the way. I've solved the mystery by the way. He didn't have his ultimate. It was barely not oh, back. Okay. But didn't quite have it. Ulted back from base to get into the fight. I don't know why you dive that far if you don't have your ultimate, but it cost him a kill that seems very unnecessary. It makes a lot of sense. I couldn't quite see that on the monitor, but you know, it's it's such an easy play to make. A couple of low health turrets that FlyQuest have to choose between, and they're hovering between top side and bottom side right now, or uh, mid lane right now. Uh, both of those, if they just make a push for it or if they get a pick, uh, there can be a pretty big swing in this game. Especially with Baron on the map. And we know both these teams are willing to go for these very early Barons. Uh, FlyQuest has taken a lot of their wins in this series off of very aggressive Baron calls, and they will move straight towards it if they think they have a chance. I mean, Kobe mentioned earlier he loves Game 5 with all DPS champions. That also means that the Baron is a very easy objective to take down, especially with the two Infernals there for FlyQuest and the Mountain Drake coming up as the next one. So we can look for that objective as well as who he and Hai facing off Edic Smith. He's here going to leap into action. So is Moon, though. 2v2 backs off. Both mid laners pulling their jungle cards. Ha-ha, here's mine. <laughs> now you back off. No, you. OK, everybody uh, playing fairly cautiously here as they are able to take down the control ward. And you can tell, you know, CLG still trying to split this map apart. Buy some time there for Darshan. Uh, he probably is the one who can gain the visit biggest advantage uh, as far as their lane spread. And the rest of them are just trying to keep these low health turrets afloat. 
Yeah, it's, it's really a lot of it is on the three-man squad in the split push, as funny as it sounds. You know, the star ends up being the guy who's in the side lane, but this three-man squad cannot get picked off. If you do get picked off, if you do not maintain control, the entire split push falls apart. Well, looks like CLG again just happy to wait and keep the lane's pressure back and forth. It is tough for FlyQuest to do much with those two turrets still up. The turrets are low, but they are not gone, and it's a huge difference at this stage in the game. CLG again just taking over, and with that Mountain Drake up in a minute 30, FlyQuest will struggle to get in there and try and contest for it. It also means that a team fight victory is worth that much more. You know, if you win a fight as FlyQuest, you clean up mid turret, you clean up top turret, there's potentially Baron. Like, the swing that can happen off of a fight like that is insane, especially when you add in the double infernal power that they do kind of have in their back pocket. Well, it looks like Hai is continuing to 1v1 who he is. He's actually two levels ahead, so CLG going to look to try and cover perhaps as FlyQuest cheat towards the left-hand side. CLG is sticking pretty firmly in mid right now, just kind of waiting, making sure those waves are pushed in and that they've got the side lanes kind of guided in the correct spot here. The trio for CLG here, Stixay, Afro, and Xmithy, do need to be very careful when their side lanes are pushing. Darshan and balls again. Darshan takes a few tired hits, but uh, doesn't seem too upset by it. Yeah, at the moment though, CLG are getting a pretty good push and they've called over Stixay, uh, trying to take the turret down. Now FlyQuest need to make a response. Do they go to the Baron? I mean, High is already over there. Yep. They might make the rush. Very risky. Yes, go. The TP. teleport is Benfold. This is FlyQuest at their best. They love these ba aggressive Barons, but CLG are already in the area using those TPs to get in. Baron is low, though. Arrow going to miss onto Xmithy, and FlyQuest, they pull off the Baron. Oh, yeah. They wanted to bait him in a little bit closer to be able to land that arrow. Both teleports were used by CLG to answer, though, and now it's the spread. And they have the mid lane track. CLG is going to run right up mid and go for this mid tier two. Moon is behind, though, so they could look to set up a flank and the following fight. Here they are, swooping around. Moon's got positioning behind CLG. They are grouped up as five, though. And if oh, they just turn... For him. That's so smart. Look at who he's trailing the team, trying to keep track of him. Dashaun may be caught, but CLG going to run out together. High, leaping over water, trying to start something. Ball's going to get Dashaun. Moon already spotted. That group is not going to quite connect. Safety in numbers here for CLG, and they are able to keep the pack together. After getting this turret, now they can circle back around. Uh, try and defend. Oh, actually, they're flanking uh, themselves. Oh, Dashaun actually may be caught here by Elimination, but they can actually cut the wave and prevent that tarp from going down. FlyQuest just don't feel confident in a straight-up 5v5. Now they have positioning to move towards the Dragon. CLG have really out-rotated FlyQuest after this Baron did not work. Completely out-rotated. The top turret for FlyQuest uh, did end up going down, or CLG's turret. Uh, in favor of FlyQuest, so they got a little bit of gold there, but definitely outplay there by CLG, and nice, nice maneuvering to at least get this mountain. So they might have comparable pressure around objectives like Baron. Oh, the fight, though! I actually trying to leap out, but he oh, can't get out of the ultimatum. Who really managed to take him down? This is honestly super scary now because you give the Mountain Dragon over to the Callista team. If they can get control of the Baron area, it is not a 50-50. It is a very heavily... Apricot! Arrow gonna find it, but not quite there. Hui looking to defend his support. Does do so successfully. Moon doesn't go all in with the ultimate. The difference between these two games, just in the arrows landing versus not landing, is so big. And here is high. Ultimatum in, nowhere to go. Yep, good job there by Darshan to jump on the pick. And COG are able uh, to get two for one there, basically. See again, Stixay also building pretty defensively for an AD carry. He does have a QSS, which makes sense. Look, the Afro didn't go for Mikhail, but a Sterex as well. I think it's such an intelligent build because FlyQuest, their team fight peters off pretty hard. You go in, you have the initial burst from Moon and High and the ultimate from Balls. If you don't kill someone right then, uh, your team fight will start to fall apart against CLGs, I think. Afro chunks. Moon doing a healthy amount of damage with the Leandries, but kind of needs another item to really get things going. And it does feel like CLG have put themselves in a spot where they've got a good gold lead and the waves are all starting to push back up. So TPs have the half the cooldowns left. As Dixie may be caught here by Moon, but he's got a tower to get safely back to. And now Stixie is on the Super offensive. Dashaun in, finds Lamination. That's going to force a flash. Balls tries to defend. High with a GA might look for a flank here, but... Darshan's ultimate is just coming up now. As Ball's ultimate expires, they will be at risk, and CLG could force Baron. Who he is going up to get the top side pushing even faster as well. A lot of vision for CLG around this Baron to set up. 
CLG again just so good at making Jolie set up correctly around the map. But FlyQuest on a wildcard team. Lemonation gonna be caught here by Darshan, but Alsek gonna lay the shots in. Darshan goes down instantly. And now High looking to dive back in, but he needs to get Stick State. Find Dick Smithy instead. Rake damage is almost enough to take him down. The Ignite isn't quite there. High actually does take him down. Jungler down. The YOLO Camille throw right here from Darshan. No defenses, and he just goes right in on Lemon Nation. Easy focus fire there from FlyQuest. And a pretty big punish. Now puts CLG in a very scary they're position. On Baron. Yeah, they're going to start the Baron. And, and Hi has a GA here. They can team fight into this very easily. CLG may have thrown the game. Have to be careful, though. Who are you going to dive in? Looks for Altec. That's straight in. Almost able to take him down the top. But not quite enough. Hi, though, on the Stixa on the other side. But who he goes down, Balls barely stays alive. And now Stixa, he's trying to be the hero for oh. his team. And Hi, who's going to take him down? Altec gets the kill. FlyQuest now back on the Baron with four from CLG dead. And in game number Number five, such a close game. FlyQuest come out with a victory in their own jungle. If Afro steals this Baron. Okay, it's not gonna happen. Level Nation gets slow. Baron over the FlyQuest, and this game turns right back around. They almost ace them out of their own jungle into a Baron. That is just a disaster play here from CLG. I mean, in the 3v5, very hard to do anything. Who he does not have his ultimate, gets a lot of trunk damage out. This is flashing in. He thought he would get the reset, kill off balls, but you know, he's not able to do it. Flashed in, doesn't even get the kill thanks to the Karma Shield, and, and now it's a complete disaster. You can say that again. And Stixa just looks Ooh. crushed. He can feel the weight of this game on his shoulders, and high. when he is happy, he is terrifying to play against. I mean, you know, it, it's not the best play from Stixay, but really, you have to look at Darshan. Like, what was that engage? They saw the entire team around, Arrow. then they step out of vision for one second, and you all in blind on Elimination. Over a wall that the Where rest of the team follow. can't get through, yeah. It's just uh, brutal. I mean, CLD, they do still have the 1-3-1 one one advantage, but FlyQuest have the tools they need to perhaps close out this game. Yep, CLG really wants to stall it out now. He's going in, he wants to try and bleed out who he huge amount of damage done as he procs it. The FlyQuest just playing around the map. Camille still has a good track on that bottom side, so Boss has to kind of stick there and move the minions back in, but he's got teleport. FlyQuest, if they see an opportunity, they can take it. And having that healing debuff for high with the Exynature's Calling in the one-on-one, -on -one, Hoogie's ultimate actually counts as a heal. So that is actually uh, debuffed, I do believe, by that Exynature's Calling and, and will make a big difference in an eventual one-on-one. -on -one. FlyQuest still with just under two minutes of Baron left. Going to try and knock down some more turrets. You kind of said it earlier, as they on that FlyQuest, when they win a team fight, they'll generally win big from it. This game, back to even as far as gold goes, and a FlyQuest can open up even more with this Baron. This game to be close to done for CLG. Yeah, I mean, CLG, they want to spread the map, they want to hold on, and, and the side lanes are still the story. Yeah, I mean, as much as that was a pretty big disaster for them, we got to see how much FlyQuest are able to take with this Baron buff. Because as you keep saying, Azale, uh, this side lane Camille still has a lot of split push power, and CLG still have a lot of options. Double teleports are available again for them. It's tough. The map's just a little too open for FlyQuest to really overcommit to anything when CLG have their globals. I mean, look how long that bottom lane is that Balls has to deal with. Like, Darshan is continuing to pressure on FlyQuest to know that if we overextend and make a mistake, we're going to lose inhibitors. That's not a winning formula for FlyQuest, even though they have Baron. Yeah, it's, it's a tough call. I mean, you have to fully commit to a fight when you do see the opportunity, but at the same time, you pick the wrong fight. Oh, Stixxay going to be caught again. Hi, looking for it. Sterik's going to broke. Hi, flashes in. He's trying to go straight for it. Stixxay getting low, cutting it up, but Hi managed to take him down. GA's going to pop with the rest Darshan of the coming in. It's a double TP, I think. Who is in now? Darshan can join as well. Hi does get taken down by Darshan, but Moon, Zonny's in the middle of the parallel convergence. Altec still needs to keep firing. It's 4v4 right now. And this is Elder Dragon that's coming up in a couple seconds, so they can use this Baron buff uh, to push up the minions, and now they're getting vision around that Elder Dragon. This would be a, a tough fight if CLG want to take it. I think they have to, though. Uh, there is no escape uh, from the Camille ultimate. That's what they're looking for. And no teleport from Huhi, so he has to walk from base. If they can delay them, uh, it's almost gone. Outside, looking for it. They're gonna try and take over the to wall. On Smithy, maybe that's a steal. Boss looks for Afrim a bit. Boss is a flash out. Like Smithy goes straight in for it. I think he's. He's gonna go down here, Redemption, not gonna be quite as Hui! Flips on the other side, Hui! Dives right in, big stuff with the parallel convergence, Moon locked up there as well! Huge one! Oh, 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 oh. the kill! Dragon over to Flyquest though, and now Hui's dead as well!
They're gonna keep going out for Moon now. Gonna go down, I think. Lemon's gonna tie him up. Altec will move in for the rest of this kill. Disaster again for CLG. We'll have to see that again. It actually looked like the dragon leveled up or something. Look at the AP went up there. It leashed back to its spawn as both uh, junglers smited it and then uh, healed up a little bit. Altec ends up getting it with uh, the auto attacks out or the volley, I believe. And now it's FlyQuest back to back. Huge team fight victories and huge I mean, objectives. They might just try to, we'll see how far they try to push this. Still 20 seconds left. They're trying to take this up. I think the, they're trying to end. They do so much damage. 20 seconds. I think they can most end. the CLG are back. FlyQuest are going to go for it all right this second. Sticks are the only one to defend for quite a while. FlyQuest going to try and end the game high. Plenty of damage. There's one Nexus That's start it. going down. Nexus turret number two. And Sticks tries to fight it out, but he's going to bleed down. High gets the kill. Nexus open it. FlyQuest reverse sweep CLG and put Altec and the rest of the team all the way to Vancouver. Oh, what an upset and what a turnaround oh, from FlyQuest. They bide their time, they find the perfect fight around Baron, around Elder, but CLG, they had that game and they threw it all away. What makes it even crazier is the way this series went with the first two games completely in CLG's control, dominating victories in game number one and two. But then FlyQuest come back with the assassins for Moon, and high, some first blood kills, some early snowballing, and they absolutely rally to take this series. I mean, high was so big in this game. You on an assassin doing the most damage in the game by far, uh, really uh, getting a lot of work done here. But you know, CLG had their chances. They were set up so well with the one three one, with the side lane advantages. They overforced by Baron, and that cost them the game. I mean, I don't often say that players with this much experience are, are subject to nerves, but at some point, the tension, the pressure, it does get to you, and it's hard to say if Darshan makes that play just not thinking the same way he would normally do in a different situation, but Flycaster are a team that say never die, and this game, somehow they held on, game after game after game. I mean, and now with smiles on their faces, you have they'll be moving on to the semifinals. You have to feel like Darshan felt pressure to make something happen because he had this advantage for so long in the side lane, and, and while Balls could not fight him, Balls was, was holding right like he was not able to actually push and get anything from that and it felt like he said hey this is the big play i can make this is the game win in my eyes and uh, he went for the big play what a great series i really enjoyed that yes. one glad you were here with me boys <laughs> oh my goodness uh, and an exciting way to end it out you know regardless of, of the little nitpicky things that we can go over uh, so many Crazy. good setups there I mean, I think that series had everything we wanted. It has a high reverse sweep in there. Combo picks for everyone in that final game. Like, it's just, I mean, I think we have to go all the way back. Afro said it's taxing to play against high. Pretty taxing to play that <laughs> series. Like, again, CLG are a team with so much experience and time together, but at some point, it just breaks. Like, you can't play that well for that long. And games one and two look very different from three, four, and five. Yeah, I was going to say, did, it's taxing to play against Afro Mood. Did you see the first two games yeah. as well? Those ones look like... Uh, you know, completely the other way. Such credit to the FlyQuest guys as far as morale, you know, and mental stability in a best of five, you know, long series like that. Yeah, the mental fortitude is insane to actually come back from that and then be up against it in game five. You know, very few ways to win the game and to still pull it out is, is incredible. And, you know, people count them out completely in this series, myself included. <laughs> you know, I thought it was going to be CLG for sure. And uh -huh. and now, you know, who knows? Sky's the limit for, for FlyQuest. They're going Two more matches left. Well, as soon as Two they more. get one reverse sweep. Two more until they're gods. <laughs> they all become way easier after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. It's just like the gauntlet. <laughs> we Things come at three. <laughs> we talked a lot about that trio again. High Lemon and Balls. But credit to the the younger players on this team as well. Moon and Altec. I mean, Altec's been around for a while. But two 19-year-olds, Moon... One of his worst performances last season now coming in, looking so good. And Altec, a player that a lot of people have questions about, especially when you're playing someone like Stixer, who is so good. They had two great games in the back half of this year. Yeah, you have to say, this year, this spring split just has been such a revival for Moon as a player uh, and just came back in a very big way. I mean, Deathless in this last game, pivotal in both the Rengar wins. He was massive this series. Certainly looking great. But to hear more about that series, we're going to head stage side where Jat has an interview with a couple.